Hey, 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 what's up, bootstrappers? All right, this is, an, uh, this is a motivational Monday coming to you on a Wednesday, the Wednesday after Christmas. Hope you all had a Merry Christmas for those of you that celebrate it, and for those of you that don't, that's all right. So, all right, I got a phone call Monday, which was uh, Christmas Eve, and there was a lady. Oh, so they have a low connection. What's this all about? Probably because I just disconnected from my Wi-Fi. So we'll see what's going on here. All right, so this hopefully is still working. So anyway, um, I just got a phone call from a lady on Monday. Uh, she called me around 10 a.m. Okay, 10 a.m., Christmas Eve. And she's like, uh, hello, I got your postcard. Um, I don't want any problems from you. I don't want you harassing my mom. Um, my father died, that's why the house is in disrepair. And when my mom finally dies, I'll get the house and it's not for sale. I'm like, hey, totally cool, man. Um, no, I'm not harassing anybody. Good morning, Randy. Uh, in fact, actually, I just um, drove by the house yesterday and I saw the house was in disrepair, or last week and the house was in disrepair and so I, I mailed out a card. So blah, 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 that's how that one went. But the fact was is that um, she called me on Christmas Eve and guess what? I did answer my phone because I'm like, hey, people are around, people are calling me, and um, and I knew she was calling from a postcard. So anyway, if you're not out there calling, what's up, Eric? This week, th these weeks, man, people are home, and they are available. Now, not everyone answers their phone like I do. It, you know, I just, I'm, kinda, I'm a special kind of crazy like that. But if you wanna find people, especially the hard to reach people that you haven't been able to get in touch with, this is the time to be doing it, man. They are uh, they are available. They are home. You can call them. You can knock them. You could uh, you can text them. You can Facebook message them. What's up, Ronnie? This is the time to be able to catch those people at home. And uh, yeah, it's the end of the year, but that's okay. It's a great way to start your first of year. First of the year. So the way you end your year is how you start the first of your year. And um, now's the time to go ahead and set that that in motion so that you can be a success rolling into 2019. Man, that's crazy, 2019. It's just right around the corner. So, um, hey, thanks for that, Ronnie. Yeah, dude. Um, so, what are some of the things that you guys are struggling with when it comes to contacting people? I know that's a big one out there that people are like, oh, you know, I can't get a hold of this person, they're not available, or whatever the reason is, but let's go ahead and share some ideas. Let's see what you guys got to go out there and start catching some people. I'm gonna change my arms here. So I got a new car. Daddy got a new car for Christmas. And um, I forgot to attach to uh, take down my little thing that I have that I attached my phone to um, in my other car. So I gotta go <laughs> get that later today or else my arm will fall off. So um, let me share with you some of my best practices when it comes to, to finding people. Uh, honestly, just talking to the neighbors. Hey, what's up, Michelle? Talking to neighbors has been a great, great way to find uh, information about a house, find people to get their phone numbers. Uh, neighbors know a lot of information. I remember one time in particular that I was looking at a house in, um, in, a, in a neighboring town and I was walking around the backyard and I saw a lady and she was like peeking through the blind. She's like, hey, what's going on over there? She's like, oh, I'll see you. And so I like, I saw her peeping at us, and so I'm like, I'm not hiding anything. I'm obviously I'm in, the, I'm in her, her neighbor's backyard, um, snooping around, you know. And so I waved her. I'm like, Hey, what's going on? And then um, she immediately like like closed the blinds up. And so I'm like, Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna leave it there. So I started walking over to her house, and I could see her. And she was following me through the blinds. So this is from the side bedroom. She went to the front bedroom, was following me. And so I went out to the front door. And I just knocked on the door politely. I didn't like you know pound on her door like, Hey, what are you doing looking at me? You're through your blinds. And I just said, Hey, you know, um, she was kind of she was old too. She was an old lady. She was very um, she wasn't I wouldn't say timid, uh, but she was. She was not afraid of us, but she also wasn't like, you know, coming outside like, hey, how you guys doing? She wasn't like overly friendly. But anyway, as I said, hey, how you doing? Um, you, you probably saw us in the backyard there. We're actually looking at this house. We're looking at buying it. It's such an eyesore for your neighborhood. I'm sure it's, it's caused a lot of problems. And then she's like, oh my gosh, I had the cops over here last weekend because someone broke in the backyard and they had to like come and like hammer the back, like a board up the back door and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh man, that's such a frustrating thing, isn't it? She's like, oh my gosh, it's so scary sometimes because she's old, right? And uh, I was like, you know, we're just, we're trying to find, because the guy's name is Brian. We're like, we're trying to find Brian. We can't find him anywhere. She's like, 
don't you have his number? His number hasn't changed. And I was like, you know, actually, I don't have his number. She's like, well, here you go. So she goes inside and she comes back out. Like, of course, like old ladies, like my grandma does. And she's just like little, like, like, I don't know, <laughs> little like note card thing or not note card thing, little, little binder, little phone book that she has. And she's just, like flipping through it. She's like, oh, here's his phone number. Here's his address. This is where he lives at now. And I'm like, holy crap, this lady knew everything about this guy. And she was just a neighbor. And he didn't, like, say, hey, watch over my house for me while I run away. You know, I was like, hey, I'm not going to pay my bills anymore. I'm going to go hide, so don't, you know. But in case someone comes by looking to buy it, here's my phone number. That wasn't what it was. She just had this information. And um, and he hadn't changed his phone number, and she knew exactly where he had moved to and all this stuff. So anyway, yeah, great, great resource. Now, I didn't buy that house. It would be a great story to be like, yeah, I bought that house. It was so cool. Um, but what we had found out was because in California here we're a non-judicial state for the most part but you can't have a judicial uh, foreclosure this guy was going through Bank of America and I don't know what happened it was a VA loan and Bank of America just wanted to put the screws to this dude and they 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 turned his non-judicial into a judicial uh, foreclosure and they were slapping him with the deficiency judgment of four hundred thousand dollars on a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, four hundred thousand dollars. They're coming after this dude for that much money, and um, yeah, I don't know. So like, we try to get that house, and <laughs> he just basically said, um, "Screw you, screw the banks, screw the world. I don't care. Leave me alone. Leave my house alone." And I'm like, "Okay, we're not touching that house." So it was just crazy because, man, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened with him. I don't know what happened, but like I said, four hundred thousand dollar deficiency judgment. All right, what we got going on here, Ronnie? Let's see if I can read this whole thing. Uh, it seems like a lot of pre-foreclosures have been ghosting since they want to get through the holidays. I am handwriting a card to all potentials today, wishing them a new year and see how I can help them in 2019 with a fresh start. Awesome, Ronnie. That's great. Hey, so let me talk to you a little bit about that. So yeah, some people do ghost. I found a lady. Uh, this was this was last year actually, and she totally was ghosting. Um, but it wasn't because she was trying to hide in the holidays. What was happening was she had no power. And so she was like jumping around from like Taco Bell and like car chargers and whatever to like charge her phone. And, and that was the whole reason she's like, cause like she went, she went silent. Like she ghosted us for about a good solid, um, like 10 days. And I'm like, holy crap, this lady's like totally not interested anymore. Like she just, she just vanished. And then she came back on. She's like, I'm so sorry. I don't have like, any, any power. I haven't been able to charge my phone. And I thought, and this is total BS. This lady's like totally scamming me. Like tell me all these like, like sob stories that are like not even true. And then I actually go to her house and literally she was living on the floor of this is a nice house in a nice neighborhood. And they had a fireplace and they were cooking their dinner over, over like the, the fireplace. And they had like a, a heating pad, like a heating um, pad that they had like a car battery or something like that they're trying to like light it with or heat it up with. It was like, it was really, really sad. Like I, it was like, holy crap. And they were having like SpaghettiOs for like breakfast. I'm like, this this lady was serious. Like she really didn't have like power to charge her phone. And so she wasn't like ghosting me because she was trying to hide. She was, that's really what it was. Now I take that back. Some people are still looking like that. Um, hey, what's up, Randy? Thanks. Yeah, a little chipper, you know. Daddy got a new car. Kids got some presents. And uh, we got a really cool gift card to this amazing restaurant up in the mountains from a really good guy. So uh, we're going to check that out. So I think that's added to my chipperness. Um, so going back to you, Ronnie. Yeah, so that's that's the thing. So you don't want to give up, though. I mean, there are several different ways. Now, your, your, your message, like, hey, I want to give you a fresh new start and stuff like that. I can tell you that from personal experience, they're gonna they're gonna throw that in the trash. I mean, it's total BS. It's total garbage. Like you don't care about these people, and and they they know you don't care about these people. And um, now I'm not saying like you don't care about these people, but for the most part, like most people are like you know what I, I can care less about you. I can care less about your family. Like I got one lady, she's losing her house. I I would love to to buy this house. I would love to to, to help her out here. And she straight up she's like I don't care about you. I don't care about your wife. I don't care about your kids. I don't care about anything else. Leave me alone. I'm calling the cops. Like they're just, they just don't care. And um, so they, that's the whole, whole okay, I, I get it. You know what? I wouldn't let the holidays play into it though. I wouldn't get psychological with these people and say, oh, it's like, oh, you know, I wish you a happy holidays. Oh, I wish you a prosperous new year. Um, that just, that just, you know, it, it's almost like rubbing salt in a wound, but it, it doesn't get to the point. People are motivated by two things. Two things are, are, are going to motivate them when it comes to the, um, this whole entire situation. Actually, I take that back. Three things would motivate people when it comes to their house. And the three things are fear, greed, and 
Well, you know, I take that back. And I'm going to give it to you actually in order. So it's 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 greed and and fear. Honestly, those are those are the two things. There's just there's two things that are going to motivate someone to take action with you, and it's going to be greed and fear. And so the first one is is greed. Like, hey man, how much money can I give you for your house? Like, honestly, like, how much is it? Like, let's let's get you some money, and let's let's get you to move on because it's that's what motivates people. It's like, okay, let's let's go for let's go for the carrot. If the carrot doesn't work, then you got to go for the stick, and it's this fear thing. And I, and let me tell you what I, what I mean by fear. So the guy I told you about that we were knocking on. His, I was walking around his backyard, and the neighbor comes out, and she's like, "Oh yeah, check this out. Are you kidding me, birds? Like really, death wish? Like like a whole like pigeon factory in the middle of the road here. Like they didn't want to like move out of my way for my car. So um, I'm talking to them, or I, I, this guy. Obviously, his house is getting completely like foreclosed on. Right, four hundred thousand dollars. Nothing I can do to help this dude. But in California, and this is the truth, and, I, and, and you gotta look up your states, where, whether you're judicial or non-judicial. But if you're in a non-judicial state, um, this is this isn't necessarily the case, but it can be. Uh, but if you're in a judicial state, this is 100% true. There's something called a deficiency judgment. So when I go and I talk to somebody, I'm like, hey, you know what? I, and, and to answer your question, you said, uh, what's my lingo? What's my favorite lingo? And this is exactly what I say to people. I'm like, hey, I'm interested in buying your house, or are you just gonna let the bank take it? What, what's your plans? I mean, I don't say you know quite like that, but that's exactly that's my lingo. It's like, hey, hey, I'm in, hey, this is Ryan. I'm interested in your house. Um, I, I'd like to buy it. Uh, I'm not sure what your plans are with it, um, or what's your plans, or what are your plans with the house, or or, or are you just gonna let the bank take it? And I sit there and I let them take, you know, let, let them answer me like, what what you gonna do? Are you gonna let the bank take it or what? And um, and they usually will say, oh, you know, stammer and stutter and stuff like that. Or they'll say, like, I'm going to the bank take it. I can care about those guys. Or I've got a plan. It's already worked out. Taken care of. You know, whatever it is. And so um, that's what I do. It's like, hey, man, you know, I'm interested in buying your house. And I, these are, again, these are these are houses that are already vacant. So I go after vacant pre-foreclosures. Because if the house is not vacant, then um, I'm dealing with emotions of people living in, the, in there. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with all that stuff. So um, the house is vacant. Hey, what? I'm interested in buying your house. What are your plans? Or are you gonna let the bank take it? And um, and, and that's how I, I roll with that one. And then what happens is if they say, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna let the bank take it. I'm like, oh, that's okay. You know, but I, 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 I am interested. Um, or you just, I mean, uh, what are you gonna do about the deficiency judgment? Because I mean, if you have abandoned this property, uh, you run the risk of having them uh, come after you for any neglect, any, any damage that are done to this property because you haven't kept it in good repair. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, there's, you can get a hit with a deficiency judgment for tens of thousands of dollars. Or, and this is true in non-judicial states too. So maybe there's not going to be a deficiency judgment. <clears throat> and so I said, okay, what are you going to do about the tax consequence then? What are you talking about? Well, if they take your house and it's, and they have to sell it for less than what is the agreed upon amount, uh, you're going to get hit with a tax consequence. And that's going to be uh, charged as income to you. So for example, if they... If your house is a, if you have, if you owe a hundred, if you owe one hundred fifty thousand dollars on your house and they're only able to sell it for for a hundred thousand, that difference of fifty thousand dollars, that's going to be you're going to be taxed as income. You're going to have a fifty thousand dollar hit or increase in your income taxes. You're going to get hit with a ten ninety nine G. I think it's a G, um, but it's a, it's a write off or maybe it's a C ten ninety nine C charge off. But anyway, you get hit as as that is for income, and so um, that's. That 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 right there alone is gonna be like what? So you got to be able to know your how to talk to these people, and you got to be able to know what their what their motivation is, whether it's fear and whether it's greed. And if you can motivate them with greed, go ahead and grease their palms, man. Give them give them a little bit of a, of a fresh of a fresh start. And if it's fear, you got to know the law. You got to know your state. You got to know exactly what's what they're up against because they think like oh you know I I, I don't own that, own this stuff or or. There's a, at one point there used to be a mortgage forgiveness act and that mortgage forgiveness act is no longer in place, man. When Obama left office, he, fa he didn't, he failed to uh, renew that. So, um, as Trump entered in office, it was already too late because on the 31st of 2016, that was gone. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not used to talking so much. So you got to know exactly how to motivate these people by understanding the law and what you're working with. Oh, you want to see this new car? My favorite pre-foreclosure pre list, I use a list called Property Radar. Um, they are out of 
they only service the West Coast. Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, and uh, Nevada. Great, great. Uh, hey, what's up, Aaron? Uh, great information from them. It's very accurate. The only thing I don't like about them is that they don't have, they don't track um, rescissions because notice of rescissions would be huge for me to understand that. That way I'd be able to go, okay, I'm not gonna go after this house because really when they say they got it taken care of, they do have it taken care of. All right, let me show you my new car and then I'm gonna go inside and get some work done. I'm gonna call some people. There we go. I got a Challenger. Love this little beast, man. Rolling up. So. All right, so, all right guys. Go ahead and post some more questions you have or comments about getting in touch with people and I will, thanks, appreciate that. I will go ahead and uh, answer them to the best of my ability later today. But I got some families that I've been tracking down that I'm gonna go ahead and get in contact with. All right, I'll see y'all later.